Hello, my friend. Welcome back to another video. If this is your first time here, thank you for joining me. So, you are looking at some pretty random things on the screen right now that typically you wouldn't see in a fluid art video, such as a tea bag and stickers. So today I thought I would bring a little tiny bit of the mixed media world into the fluid art world. And this is what the plan is. I'm going to show you how to bring a tea bag into this to add some color into your painting. I'm going to show you how to use stickers in a different way. And most importantly, I am going to introduce you to this brand new paint line that I'm really, really excited about. So pour yourself a cup of tea, darling, and let's get started. So as I'm talking to you about these brand new paints, I'm going to open up the tea bags and put them in this bowl of hot water. Now this is just from the tap. I let it get as hot as it could and filled it up. So for you long-term viewers of mine, you know the name color art and you know about primary elements and their resin art colors and all of that. All right, you've heard me mention it countless times. For new viewers, color art is a company that sells the most beautiful pigments ever. Ground up mica with actual dry version of pigment added to them, okay? So every product that Color Art has made since it opened its doors has had sparkle in it. Well, they finally have released a fluid acrylic paint that has no sparkle. It's a gold, like a golden fluid consistency in regular normal colors to go along with their beautiful sparkly colors and they are when you do the math and you do uh add my discount to it they are cheaper than golden so i'm very excited about this they are highly pigmented i tested them they were working amazing so i have a discount for the 12-piece set, I'm going to tell you what colors come in them. The reason why I like fluid paints, whether it's golden or this new line here, is because of the consistency of the paint. It is on the thin side so that when you add it to something like Floetrol or, you know, the bloom recipe to do your bloom paintings, you don't have to technically add water like the paint is at a perfect consistency for those acrylic pores. Now, of course, depending on, you know, the colors that you use or what you add into your cup as far as your pouring medium is concerned, sometimes you'll have to add a little bit of water here and there, but most times it's like the perfect consistency for a lot of the acrylic pores that we do. So that's one good thing about it. The second good thing about it is that because it's so pigmented, you don't have to use a lot of it versus a tube paint where you have to use quadruple the amount of paint to color your cup of paint or your cup of pouring medium, I should say. So that's why I like to use fluid brand paints over tube paints, even though they're a little more expensive, they last longer. So I just realized something. I'm putting these tea bags into all of this water, and I really only need a little bit of this that I'm going to be showing you here. So I'm going to transfer these into the cup, probably make a mess. All right, we'll let those sit in there. And then I have one more here. So we want it nice and dark. So there's 12 colors, as I said. There's a Hansa yellow, a pyrrole orange, quinacridone red, quinacridone magenta, green yellow, phthalo green, cobalt aqua, ultramarine blue, nickel azo gold, 
dioxazine violet, carbon black, and of course, a titanium white. So if you're using these for just a regular acrylic pour, I'm going to show you a little uh, example here. You would take whatever pouring medium you're using, add it to your cup. In my case, this is Floetrol. Take a color. I don't want to waste my purple, so. Take a color and add a few drops at a time until it reaches the right color or the, the depth of the shade that you're, you're looking for, okay? So this right here, two little drips colored this cup of paint. Okay, this right here is the perfect consistency for a majority of all those acrylic pours you see, such as ring pours, uh, flip cups, dirty pours, whatever, you know, non-bloom, non-pearl technique. It's Dutch pourable. It's blowable. I technically would add still just a few drops of water to this. Not much at all. So just for the heck of it, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. That's as precise as it gets. And now that's perfect. That's I tend to go a little bit thin on the Dutch pour, but to me this is perfect for a Dutch pour. Okay, it flows really fast off the stick, leaves a little tiny mound on the surface. Perfect. Now, if I wanted to make it a little bit darker, I'll add two more drops, mix it in, and then I'll get a totally different shade. It'll be darker. So, you know, essentially you're using a lot less of this than you are with the tube paints. So that's why I like to use things such as fluid. So again, these are brand new. They just come out and I'm very excited. I'm going to show you today, however, how to use them in a totally different liquid art, fluid art way. So as I'm brewing my tea over here, I'm going to select what colors I want this painting to be. I'm going to go with the nickel azo gold. I'm going to take out this beautiful cobalt aqua. Maybe we'll use a little bit of the phthalo green and a little bit of the yellow and white. Okay. Okay. So what we're going to do is we're going to put a little bit of color into our cup. We're going to thin it with water only. And we're almost going to make like a water color out of it. Okay. So I'm going to start with the cobalt aqua. There's really no amount. Maybe that's like four or five drops of it. I'm going to add a little bit of water to it. to get it mixed in here. All right, add a little bit more. And now we have a beautiful aqua looking watercolor. Well, it's not watercolor, but acrylic thinned down so much. It's the consistency of water. It's colored water. Okay. So that's what I'm going to do to all of the colors that you saw me pick out here. And now we need to deal with our tea bags. 
because we are going to use this liquid to create our brown color. That's right. You can use tea bags, even coffee grinds to create a wash for your art. This is big in the mixed media world and I'm going to use it today in the fluid art world. All right, so now we have this beautiful brown color. I'm going for a uh, sepia brown color themed painting with pops of teal and a darker green and yellow and that azel gold. And now let's talk about the stickers. So what I, my plan is, and I hope it works, is I'm going to put these stickers down. Now, what stickers am I going to do? Let me give you some inspiration here. I got some puffy dimensional stickers. I got some flat stickers, some wooden stickers. I'm hoping that either the puffy stickers or the dimensional stickers will be the easiest for me to peel off of my substrate because what I'm going to do is use these stickers just to create a negative image flying through my design, a negative image of butterflies flying through my design. So other ideas would be something like picture frames. They actually sell picture frame stickers where you can stick this down to a canvas and have some color blowing out of it very, very beautiful look. I got these at Hobby Lobby. You can see I never buy just one of each. I have to get multiples. So all kinds of ideas that you can look into. Use your imagination. I'm going to just show you one today, but there are many. So I think I'm going to go with this, the wooden stickers, because I feel like they'll be easier to pop off of my substrate. Which, speaking of substrate, today... I'm going to use an artist panel, but you can do this on canvas. I've done it on canvas before and it works great. So this is a 16 by 20 artist panel that's already gessoed. You don't have to worry about it. And it's great for mixed media, acrylic pouring, oils, acrylics, graphite, so many different uses, okay? So that's what we're going to be doing this on. I'm going to get it set up and we're going to get started. Also very important, I'm going to be using my blow dryer to blow these colors around. But first I need to design my stickers. Well, not design them, but put them down where I want them to be in this design. So I'm thinking of butterflies flying up like this. Now I'm going to be designing this backwards because, you know, I have to design it so that I can see where things are going. So you'll be seeing it in the opposite direction. All right. So if you don't want to use stickers, you can also just draw out some butterflies on some um, uh, transfer, not transfer paper, contact paper. Peel it off, stick it down. Then when the painting dries, you could peel that off. But I thought the stickers might be nice. Maybe they will add a little some something. And hey, if you want to leave them, you can even leave them. But I'm looking for that negative image look on my art. So we're going to put that right there and hope that it's strong enough to keep the paint from seeping underneath it. All right, so I'm all ready. What this is going to do is it's going to create a soft, is it ethereal look? A wispy, 
almost like an alcohol ink, to be honest. I'm just making sure these are pressed down really, really good. Almost like an alcohol ink look to it, maybe. So the first thing I need to do is prop this up so the paint doesn't puddle on the sides here because it's just a board. In my house, we are fancy. We use cat food cans. No paint stands necessary like that. I just saved myself 30 bucks. <laughs> All right, so yeah, here. I want to turn this around towards you, but I need to be able to see it when I'm designing it or else it's going to not look right. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take some of my tea and I'm going to put it in some different areas. I'll use a pipette, but you could definitely just pour it on, drip it on if you want. It's just I know this teacup is going to make a mess on me. So what I will actually do is transfer this into my cup. So I'm going to just like, I'm not going to pour a ton of fluid around those stickers. I'm going to work it in slowly. Now, obviously, they're going to get wet, but. I don't want them getting too wet. So now I'm going to take a little bit of this here. Thalo turquoise. Do the same thing. Kind of add it around. Some of the yellow. Yellow might be a little too strong still, so we'll see. Yep. All right, let's start by moving that around first. All right, so I'm going to add a little more of my uh, coffee, coffee, tea, just a little bit more. And worst case scenario, if my sticker idea doesn't work, what I'm going to do before I remove them is take a white Posca marker and outline them. So this way, if it seeped underneath there, I can go back and hand paint white and still have my look I'm going for. So you'll see this is behaving a lot like alcohol inks where it won't flow where there is no uh, liquid already. Like you'll see it avoiding areas that are dry. Alcohol ink does the same thing. It will avoid those areas and only go where there's other alcohol ink. So... Just got to kind of work with it and keep adding your colors in. Look at those fun bubbles. So I use kind of a, a lot of blue over here. That's why we got a lot of that green with the yellow. But it's okay. I'm loving it so far. Let's 
start adding a little bit in here. I'll tell you, if you want to try art journaling, I do that also. <clears throat> there are a lot of things that I do that you guys don't see on here. Um, just because I feel like a lot of people wouldn't want to see that. I know a lot would, but there's even more that wouldn't. So I tend not to show these things. But doing this staining technique with tea or coffee really uh, works well on mixed media paper, like in your art journals. So most importantly, let's see if my idea worked. Well, it worked a little bit on that one. Hey, it worked a little bit. I mean, a little tiny bit got under there. So here's what it looks like before I decide to screw it all up. <laughs> uh, I'll explain in the next frame. So let me explain what's going on here now. While the camera was paused, I decided to outline a couple of the butterflies in gold and I did not like them. So I'm trying to mask those two butterflies and then I decided you know what, I don't like this either. So this painting is going to end up being a two-part video because uh, I should have just left it alone. But, you know, you're always tempted to do things. And um, so now you see me here filling this in. I didn't like that in the end. I was going to put a couple of them there uh, just around the painting. And I should have just left it alone. But, you know... I do these things sometimes. So what I ended up doing in the end to this was taking that phthalo green and kind of sponging the outer corners to make it look like forest that the butterflies are flying up through. You see a little bit of the center still where uh, the butterflies are, obviously. And um, 
that's the sky poking through. But now that I'm looking at this, watching this playback, I should have did a couple of those solid green butterflies. They would have been pretty. But hey, you know, sometimes these things don't dawn on you when it's when it's right in front of your face. But the whole purpose of the video was to show you how you can use fluid paints very, very thin just to kind of stain a surface and how you could use tea and or coffee if you wanted to, to add some color into a piece. You get that nice steampunk brown from that stain. And right about now, you're probably saying, what is she doing? <laughs> but uh, yeah, like I said, I decided to add this in and I'm going to work on this a little bit later. I will film it when I do it to show you what ended up happening to this painting. But for now, this is where we're going to end the video, my friends. Thank you so very much for joining me. Get out your tea bags. Give it a shot and see if you can create a piece of fluid art using some liquid fluid acrylic paints. Hopefully the new ones that I showed you today and go for it. Have a ball with it. Hit that like button on the way out if you don't mind. Subscribe if you are not already and check out the description for all of my social media links. Happy pouring my friends.